Would you look at that? Another member of the Hishaku. Let's see how strong you really are. What's up guys, I'm Lopunso here, and here we are to do a breakdown slash live reaction and review to chapter 49 of Kagula Bachida, which is known as Deadlock. And I'm intrigued, mainly because, once again, this is a new member of the Hishaku, and very particularly the Hishaku based on the marking of their hand. Of course, we've seen a bunch of their subordinates, we've seen a bunch of their allies, we've seen a bunch of different varieties of weapon wielders and magic wielders and sorcery users inside the universe, but this is, I think, only the second time since we supposedly ran into the leader who may have been named drop last chapter kuro not kuro i'm conflating manga but there was a name drop last chapter which completely went over my head about the hypothetical identity of the leader character we may have met already if that even is the leader maybe not if it's a different character but regardless i'm excited so let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it editing me are you ready three two one What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do have to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. Any other fun fact? I like their design. It's simple so far, but honestly, in comparison to the original guy's design, I do see some similarities from the eye shape to the markings on their face, obviously to the hand, the marking on their hand. There's a lot of stuff that's going into it, and so far, setting a base boundary or base design or sort of set standard for a group like the Hishaku is important, especially considering they are basically our main antagonists. So the fact that I like the design and I can see aspects of the other guy, I think, what was it? Hold on, I'm going to straight up pull up last chapter. Because I believe... My brain is screaming Kuro, but that's Gachi Kuda, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Kagura Bachi. Please. Kagura Bachi Viz. If I can find it real quick. But ultimately, I am excited. And especially considering this is going to be Chihiro fighting another one of them again. And don't get me wrong, it's not like he really did bad against the other guy. But it was very clear that ultimately, you know... The other guy wasn't trying that hard, or at least in my opinion, he was very much there to stall and burn a bunch of Shiro's energy. He, like, he didn't fight seriously at all. And we don't even really get to see his fight with Hiyuki and Flamebone. He kind of just leaves. It's never confirmed where he went, how he went, how that battle went. Hiyuki just shows up later. So presumably, he was mostly vibing. And thusly, seeing another Hishaku member and determining their power level, or the average power level, considering this does seem to be a group of numerous powerful sorcerers, against Shihiro, who is currently our most powerful character, that is at least going to be consistently on our side, or we're going to be consistently following, because it doesn't seem like Hiyuki's actually going to be sticking around with Shihiro, as I had hoped, as that cover page deluded me into. But with it being the case, let me see just what that fella's name was. Good selection with free in the neighborhood, blah blah blah, random sources with enough that Senseki look happy. Yura, Yura. It's not Jura, it's it's not Jura, that's Boruto, it's not Kuro, that's Gachikura, it is Yura. Yura is the character name drop that was from last chapter. I'm not sure if Yura is the guy that we saw back in the Sazanami clan arc, or that's a completely different character. Regardless, I'm excited to see this one cook. But let's see and hop right into chapter 40. Oh deadlock at least from the chapter title alone that implies that chiro's going to be relative which is interesting very very interesting especially considering he's back to basics he no longer has cloud gacha as far as we know and doesn't seem like any sort of ability absorption he had is going to be a thing so let's see the shaku this guy wasn't there when they slaughtered my father mm. so that implies one of two things why did I struggle to put up two fingers? That implies one of t one of two things. Either one, the Hishaku is growing. As in, there are more and more and more people being added over time. And considering, I believe it's only been about two or three years. I, for some reason, the timeline is not popping into my head immediately. It hasn't been that long since Chihiro's father was executed. Then, if they're growing in number and there are that many powerful sorcerers running around as the opposition, that's dangerous. Number two, it could imply a sort of possession thing. Like, aka, previous members of the Hishaku end up transferring their souls or their livelihood into another person in order to transfer that power. Three, it could imply also the idea that maybe they just didn't send everybody. Notably, we do not get much context for the battle that ended up taking Konishiki Yorokuhiro's life. We have no idea how it really went. We kind of just cut to, oh, we're living a happy life. Oh, daddy's gone and all the blades are taken. So it's entirely possible that the Hishaku that Chihiro saw just wasn't the full one. 
Notably, the most dangerous one would obviously be the first. If there are just more and more sorcerers joining the Hishaku, or the Hishaku is recruiting more and more sorcerers, that's just more and more powerhouses that they're going to have to deal with. And of course, when they get all the Enchanted Blades back, meaning the Kamunabi plus Chihiro, obviously they're going to be having a decent chunk of firepower on their own, but clearly having more and more and more powerful sorcerers of various levels of strength and dangerous unique abilities as so far there have been very few characters that overlap in abilities when it comes to sorcery is dangerous the soul transfer thing only comes to mind because i I've, I've seen it in other <laughs> in other in other um Manga. And even though he's the fiction where ultimately an organization will typically like use up a body and then decide to move on to the next one there's one that i'm thinking of that's like right off the top of the number but it's a major spoiler for that manga so i'm not going to say what it is but i've mentioned the manga before i've covered it extensively on the channel before a bit a major villain from the manga i'm thinking of specifically works like that where they hop from body to body to body to body and obviously like orochimaru from naruto think of it something like that but of course it's only been so little so maybe there's no reason for them to have done that i don't know we don't know much about the hishaku that Chihiro saw the third one no one's fine too like it ultimately the idea that not everyone was there kind of just makes sense. Ultimately, Kunishige was mostly defenseless as far as we knew. Shiva wasn't even there to help him. So it was Kunishige and his son who were under the protection of barriers and maybe some guard, but clearly not nowhere near enough. Well, let's see. The rest of them seem like hired hands. What are you trying to do? To kill Uraha and negate his eternal contract. Oh, you mean that. But, but yeah, I guess that is like the most clear thing. They came here for Uraha's life. And that's the easiest thing to do. Notably, I suppose the question becomes, why didn't they do this sooner? Why didn't they just pull the same jump plan at every single fortress? If they went and did that with Rokuhira, and clearly the Hishaku was willing to show themselves, why didn't Kuro, or Yura, allow them to do this sooner? Y'all stole the Divine Blades years ago. Why'd you wait so long? There's probably going to be some extra context to that, other than just like, well, we had to wait for Chihiro to become a viable combatant. <laughs> but let's see. Oh, you mean that. Uh, I figured he'd want to say... Oh, that... <laughs> oh, that's devious. That, that's mad devious, but I'll admit... That's, that's how you said it with good antagonist. A willingness to be active. Because that's the main thing about this Shishaku member. They're very particularly like, hey... I'm sick and tired of sitting around all this time. Let's see if we can somehow get active. But at the same time, he was like, I know how to make other people get active. I know how to get under this guy's skin. I know how to mess with people. And for him to drag, like, even he admits himself in the last chapter, it was a hassle to drag their bodies here. But simply for the fact that he really wanted an easy job baiting out Uraha and ultimately making him nice and angry and foolish and easy to... He just went with the most simple route. Drag the bodies here. Lay them out. When he may have had faith that they survived, make it nice, simple, and easy to know that they didn't. Let's see. I figured he'd want to say a proper goodbye. They were actually pretty tough. They even beat the Datenseki armed troops. That's something to be proud of. That is impressive, though, because notably the Datenseki are supposedly just mystical blade users. Or. Or maybe not mystical blade users. They're they essentially have the enchanted blades, if only temporarily. And the fact that there are combatants in verse who are able to readily counter that without enchanted blades of their own is impressive. Especially considering there were multiple of the Daitenseki users. Now, of course, would they all be on the level of Tenry? Doubtful? Because once again, Tenry was part of the Sazanami clan's elite fighting force versus these just do appear to be random lugs that they hired and said, hey, eat this, we'll pay you 50 bucks. And they were like, oh, cool, I'll eat this for 50 bucks. And they ate it for 50 bucks and then they were empowered but didn't really have any fighting skill. But still, that's yet to be seen. It's impressive. Very, very impressive. Based on what could transpire in the future, if they do get more powerful people, will lead to Datsenseki. And obviously, I feel like something that's being set up as an underlying current is that the Hishaku aren't willing to use the Datsenseki themselves, but if it came down to it, they do have that resource on hand. Meaning that we may see one of the Hishaku end up using one of the Datsenseki. So, an extremely powerful sorcerer with fighting ability enhanced with a power equal to an enchanted blade. I smell it. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, because I don't think the Death Insect is a little bit too recently introduced, but I could see it, especially considering Chihiro is only going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. But see. And this guy slaughtered the guys who defeated the Death Insect troops. In other words, he's a total beast. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? 
and and that's that's a big issue they were going to run into regardless. Ultimately, if they decided to pull the same jump plan that's referenced here in this flashback, they lose. They lose. The Yutaku are powerful. That, that, that's the thing. And once again, it sort of plays into the idea of what their long-term goal is, what is the point of their planning, and why do they not do certain things. Because, for example, leaping to another popular series, I mentioned Naruto already through Orochi Mara, but let me bring it up again. Why didn't, you may be wondering, oh, well, why didn't the Akatsuki just immediately go after all the Tailed Beasts when they did? One, they did consistently go out on missions, and two, it's because all the villages had their own resources, and the Jerky themselves were actually rather strong. Sure, you could have said, why didn't Pain go after and solve them all? Eh, maybe, but once again, they were all dancing to Obito's tune, and Obito very particularly wanted to wait a certain point for a certain bit in order to make sure certain things fell into place before he ended up getting all the different Biju and feeding them to the Gitomazo in order to create the Tentails. So, like, there was an underlying source of the plan. At first, it wasn't clear when the Ak Akatsuki was introduced, but by the time we got to the end of the Akatsuki, by the time we figured out Obito was the leader and stuff like that, we were able to make it all make sense, and Nobito explained it, essentially. So for the Ishaku, a similar idea is raised here. If you have the capability to do Jump Kaisen, why are you not Jump Kaisening everybody? We'll find out, presumably, eventually. Let's see. Uraha, what do you have to say? Mr. Uraha, sorry your friends got ganked. <laughs> but let's see. Uh-oh, about to get attacked through the window? From the window! <gasps> to the wall. Let's see. Oh, he's so clean with... <laughs> I hope all that. I, I mean, presumably they have to be, because that's the thing, right? I, I kind of looked at their more eccentric designs. I was like, eh, they probably aren't going to be built like that. Because if they all need protection. But, like, these all are trained military veterans who are wielding the most powerful weapons on the planet. It makes perfect sense that they're built like this. <laughs> but it still it still catches me on guard. Why is he so clean with it? Bro said, you don't need that arm. And instantly did it, too. He's so smooth with it. Oh, you're so bad. <laughs> and he's not as much of a, a, a weirdo as I thought it was going to be. He's still a little bit strange, but hey, not not as strange as I feared. So ultimately, right, he's just cooking. Oh, the, the wrist? It's whipping up right now. It's whipping up right now. Look at this. Once again, Hokusano Sensei. Hokusano. I keep messing this up. Hokusano Sensei. Hoku. Hoka Zono Sensei. Hoka Zono Sensei. So clean with it. So clean with it. They have some of. Honestly. Especially for how young the manga is, already rivaling Yoga. At least in my opinion, for like best action. And admittedly, I'll say rivaling Gege, but still not close to Suzuki Sensei. I still say Suzuki Sensei from Sakamoto Day's fame is just better. They're just different. <laughs> if it, I'll probably, one of these days, I'll do a comparison between these three manga, especially with JJK wrapping up soon. I'll probably do a comparison to explain why on all levels, like all three of them do combat so, so well. They make such a fantastic use of manga as a medium and overall has just some of the best action I've seen in recent memory. It was in comparison to a lot of more popular manga that are also action-based. But right now, I'm going to just say they clean with it. Let's see. Huh? Focus. We have a job to do. Yes, indeed. But the thing is, how do you get there? And like now that you're so presumably at the location you need to be, where are your reinforcements? Can't you go bring, 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 bring? We're still getting jumped. Bring, bring. The the Shaku's here. They're they're trying to spread where his cheeks open. Like call for help. Maybe how could he? It's just you, considering you're just basically useless right now. Like presumably, maybe he can use Iso. He hasn't tried to do that yet, but he still doesn't have access to his subspace. And while well, Hakuri is a physical fighter somewhat, he's clearly not to the level of Udaha and definitely not Chihiro. So, like, buddy, pick up that phone! <laughs> Let's see. We have a job to do. <laughs> Absolutely. I love how he just doesn't care. <laughs> bro, bro knows that we will get more. <laughs> there, there are infinite resources, and we are the infinite resources. Let's see. Right. My job is to protect Mr. Uda. Yeah, but you do probably want to focus him. Like, like that. that's the thing, right? Honestly, since you now know that Uraha himself is capable of defending himself, and you do have some sort of faith in Hakuri, I'd say leave the fodder to him. The person that's clearly the biggest threat is this guy. Absolutely undeniable. Does he have a name? I have the chapter previous chapter pulled up. You look happy. Of course I am. Yoda, blah, blah, blah. And she had the blades boring. That was prideful, dude. Hiro... Hirohiko, 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 I like him already, if only for the fact that he just seems really cool, but ultimately, I do think Hirohiko should be Chihiro's main focus, because ultimately, he's the dangerous one here, 
he was the one who defeated those who defeated the Daiten Seki wielders. Sure, you do need to worry about these other guys. Maybe any of them could pull the Daiten Seki at any time and start wielding the power of the Enchanted Blade. And obviously, Gorilla is powerful. He may not be able to do that without any sorcery. He's just wielding a regular defensive katana. But at the same time, at any moment, you take your eyes off Hidehiko and... He just rips off Uda's head. Okay, we have no idea what Hiriko's abilities are. And especially considering the bodies of the guard of Uda are still intact. Like, presumably, he may not have just raw physical strength, but I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> but let's see. To protect Mr. Uda, Nishiki. Nishiki? That's what he used earlier. They had no time to respond. Ultra high speed. Oh! He's good. Ah, I love a good speed blitz. Ooh, what is this? What is this? Blood grain. Huh? Did bro did he form the paper out of himself? Oh he literally he literally did, I think. Is that the paper coming out of his wrist? Or is that just me misinterpreting the art there? Blood grain. Huh? Nani? Tor he's wait! You want to talk about a two for one special dog? What? So, so we see Chihiro run up, and he swings. It presumes like this is the beauty. Oh, my God, Hold on, let me see. So that's cr so he takes off G Bro's arm, and notably Bro's arm was down. He looked like he was about to cast a spell. Bro's arm was down. But Chihiro swung with such efficiency and such speed that he removes Bro's arm somehow while it's up here. Like maybe it was like a of like an like a strike like this because the the thing that's strange is right. Brody here has his arm down on a katana in this shot. Then by the next shot, his arm is up and his arm is removed. But also Bro Brody's head is removed. But notably, the angles of cut are different. For the arm, the angle looks like this, right? But then for the head removal, the angle looks like this. So it's almost like Chihiro went from here, because he's holding the blade to his right. He swings up to remove the guy's arm, only to immediately pivot and swing down. I think it's fine for the most part, and it does fit the ultra high speed dynamic, though I will admit, maybe you shouldn't have had them change positions, maybe? And also, maybe that could have been done better in two panels. It's a little, it's a bit fast. I, I could understand it. Even I got confused for a hot second looking at this. But still, it's gas. Blood Let me see. Let me shoot this back real quick. But what does Blood Crane do? Oh, they're about to hit Chihiro. Oh, no, not Chihiro. Oh, you want to talk about giving out back shots, bro? What? So the, oh, the crit, I see why they're called blood crit, I see the fish. They dove through bro's back and then splat, ew, splattered on Chihiro's face. Oh, but he clean with it, oh, but he clean with it, oh, but he clean with it. Oh, that's wild too. So interesting, interesting, interesting. So I thought he was going to cast something here. Looks like he wasn't able to cast anything in time, but he had the katana blade in his left hand still. The blood cranes dive through him. They block Chihiro's vision by splattering everything everywhere. They themselves don't seem to do any damage. And in fact, they seem to fly right past Chihiro here. But in the midst, since the blade was thrown up, Hidehiko grabs it and goes to swing down. And notably, unless I'm mistaken, maybe maybe it, I'm, I'm reading this wrong. It looks like Hidehiko like flips the blade too, right? Because notably, for at least from my understanding, the blade position would have to be like this, right? When the guy was holding it. Then he probably goes to cast and swing. His arm ends up. Chihiro slices off the arm. I guess the blade was always unsheathed, though it looks like it's in a. It looks like it may be sheathed. Oh, okay, no, no, no. I, I'm reading it wrong. I'm reading it wrong. The blade. There is no sheath on the blade. That actually makes more sense. That makes more sense. So there was no sheath on the blade. So he was holding it like this. It goes up, and then when his arm went up like this. Arm sliced off. Hidehiko grabs it and then swings it back down. So okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. I was I thought he was holding the blade backwards, <laughs> like he hadn't unsheathed it yet or it was still attached to his waist. But no, it wasn't his hand. The blade was unsheathed. So he gets it slashed off. The blood queens come in. They block Chihiro's vision, but Chihiro's able to respond in time to block Hidehiko's swing of the blade. Interesting that blood crane only did that much though. I was hoping 
I was gonna do a little bit more. Well, I suppose blocking his vision is one step and probably has more abilities too. Let's see. <clears throat> the block is clean. He's wiping the blood. Ooh, interesting. So the katana broke. Mm. I mean, we've seen weapons right against the Blades before, but that katana broke instantly. What is this? Ah, okay. So the initial, the initial application. All right, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the vision right now. The initial application of Blood Cranes was simply to block Shiro's vision and to catch him off guard, which allowed Hidehiko to focus all of his attention, get all Shiro, the most, their powerhouse's attention on him, while the Blood Cranes, which he can still control, end up attacking Uraho, who's still defending himself from all the random fodder. But notably, these aren't the cranes. These seem to be individual paper shuriken. Interesting. So we have a... This is gonna sound so weird. We have a Conan. A lot of a lot of Naruto mentions today. <laughs> a lot of Naruto mentions today. But we do have a Conan essentially in Hidehiko. Let's see. Come on, focus. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing though. With, with multitasking like that, and especially I hate to say it, unfortunately, while Hakuri is kind of useless, <laughs> centipede. What do you mean centipede? You do not have the Shinuchi big dog. But let's see. But. Ultimately, I, I do get that. That's the that's the issue of, like, defending multiple points. I always bring up video games, and I'm going to do it again. Smash Bros. Have y'all ever tried dealing with a 3v1 jumping scenario? I feel like everyone has. I feel like everyone's been playing with their friends, and then they somebody notices, That man has three stocks! But, like, sometimes you can do it, like, if you enter, like, Ultra Instinct, Ultra Zen, Ultra Zen fighting game mode. But half the time, even if I am better than all the three people we can jump by, just the sheer numbers can confuse you. Because when you're in the midst of blocking another attack, someone's coming up behind to grab you, while someone's about to down you from the heavens. I specifically remember one scenario. A friend was of mine was playing Kirby, another one was playing Fox, and the other guy was playing Mario. I was playing Sonic. They finally noticed that I had all three of my stocks left, and I got jumped to oblivion. <laughs> I specifically remember a sequence where I was blocking the blaster, because I didn't want to take any more chip damage, because I didn't want to lose my first stock, and then I ended up getting grabbed, down throwed, and then immediately got Kirby down beat and died. The reason I remember that sequence so much is because they all went crazy, and I lost that match. Ultimately, I, I wish I could say like some sort of triumphant story, like, they got my first stock off me, and then I immediately flipped around and sold them with my Super Sonic. No. I lost. You know who won? The Kirby player. And they won exactly how you think a Kirby player against the Mario player would win. But with that being the case, I get that. The mental stack kind of goes crazy, but ultimately, you gotta focus on what's most pressing. And in this case, Hirohiko, a member of the Yishaku, is the most pressing, and Chihiro naturally was inclined to focus the most on that. But let's see. The Paper Shuriken, they dig into Uraha, who, and I'll give her, Uraha credit, he does seem to try and block that, but that may be the, this hand may be this guy's hand. But let's see. Come on, focus! Hakuri, centipede! Huh? Centipede. Oh, he means that! <laughs> oh. Kudo. Oh, uh, ooh! Ooh, that's clean! Ah, that's clean! See, that, that's a nice way. And, and I, I will admit, I do like how N10 can be used to replicate the abilities of basically every other one. That is neat. Using the two... Using the ability of the blade to send out a shockwave to slice through everybody? Neat. Though, admittedly... Let's see. Where is Hidehiko? I guess it makes sense, once again, that all the fodder would immediately get hit by this. But I want to see where Hidehiko is. Yeah, okay, so he ducks. Once again, going to show his prowess and his difference amongst these regular goons. Not regular gooners, regular goons. These regular goons, where he casually reacts to it. He doesn't even seem to... He doesn't even lose a lock of hair from this. And he dodges entirely, just as Hakuri is able to yank Uraha down. But I'm worried, now that Uraha's been pierced by those paper shuriken, will anything happen to him? Does that mean he has any sort of jurisdiction or control over him? Let's see. <laughs> Clean slice. Ooh, tore through all the window trains, too. Train window trains? Train windows. Mr. Uda, I'm good. <laughs> Bro's like, we're fighting. We live in them. Nice one. The rest of them are no big the rest of them are no big deal. Except for the kid with the long hair. Okay, so he so he does look young. I, I was holding back my comments, but I was gonna mention he you know, looks mad young. But let's see. This guy has the skill and speed to come after my life while defending himself against an enchanted blade. It's a struggle for Chihiro to protect me and deal with him. 
and a group called the Hishaku killed him. Don't worry about me anymore, Chikuro. You've got this. Ah. That's sweet. But still, no, he doesn't have to worry about you. One, that's the mission. Two, that's the mission. And three, that's the mission. And four, the Enchanted Blades. We need you, we need you alive. Not because, well, you are a cool character, but not just because of that, but because if he does get you, we all are cooked. They will get a whole Enchanted Blade under their control. Even though we don't, I forget, do we know who wielded what? We don't know what their Enchanted Blades do. But still, not real, we need you alive. But I do get what he means though. Ultimately, being forced to play multiple grounds here isn't wise against someone that powerful. And once again, he's just getting started. I feel like we haven't seen anything what Hidehiko actually has to offer so far. So I do get Onoha essentially telling Chihiro, Lock in! He will cook you if you don't. <laughs> one second. Uh-oh, Hidehiko, what you cooking now? <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> That's wild, bro said. I am not bothered. Oh, and he gave him front shots, too. That is crazy. Bro said, it doesn't matter anymore. And go straight out the train. But that's the only thing, though. Now you're leaving him open. If if even one or two of these guys have a dot in second, I was caught. Like, once again, he's powerful. But is he Enchanted Blade powerful? <laughs> enchanted Blade wielder with no Enchanted Blade? I don't think, he, I don't think his games are that good. I think he makes this be good. So, <laughs> I hope I hope you're cooking something, Chihiro, because right now it is looking quite devious. But well, <laughs> straight through the chest, too. That's why. What? You're leaving Uruha on his own? Are you sure about that? Hey, uh, I don't blame him. That, that's a good question. That's a real good question. Shut up. It's not ideal, but the risk of having this guy near him is worse. Let's review the balance of power. <laughs> yeah. So, we're totally outmatched. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like Suruha said. Your calculations are nonsense. The sorcerers using the Datin Seki are disposable to the Ishaku. Even with the extra power, elite fighters can't beat them. In other words, they're not the real issue. The issue is, they weaken the Kabunabi guards enough so that the elite fighters could finish them off. The Kabunabi side has two fighters with enchanted blade level fighting prowess. Shout out to... I'm, I feel like there's gotta be more than Hiyuki. I know they're understaffed, but there's gotta be more than Hiyuki and Shino, bro. Let's see. The Shaku side has more than that, but they're short-lived. On both sides, there are skilled fighters without enchanted blades. Yep. Our fighting power is split evenly. Mm, I wouldn't say that. I would still assume the worst. Especially Chihiro, since you know that so far the two Hishaku members you've encountered were neither of the ones, or none of the ones that were there at the day your father died. Like, dude, something, like, something should stand out. The fact that you don't recognize either of them may mean this whole thing's a setup. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I wouldn't assume that. Just based on the amount of unknown. Sure. It is nice that the wielders of the Dothan Seki aren't skilled, but you don't know if all of them are going to be unskilled. Could just take one. You may run into another Henry, bro. You never know on that front. And two, you don't know how many Hishaku there are. You don't know how many Elite Fighters they have that don't use Enchanted Blades. All of them. But still, like, that's the thing. You don't know the number. And what if, since you know this guy exists, what if he just shows up? He was waiting for you to take the bait and ultimately leave Uraha with someone who can't protect him. And Uraha with himself, who, well, he is mentally built like that. He can't protect him that well all by himself. What if they're waiting for this? And then another Hishaku member shows up and gives Uraha back shots. What? Why do you do that? But I guess you kind of have to focus on the here and now. You can't focus on the hypotheticals. But I think right now, while Chihiro's thinking, I don't think assuming that they're split evenly makes any sense at all any sense at all because as you yourself have experienced in bait and i assume hiyuki experience this guy here who may be yura clearly already rivals y'all and right now you do not have hiyuki as backup you just have you hakuri and Uda. so this guy shows up and use uraha back shot your cup let's see. split evenly oh another another wheeler our key strategy is that soon as soon as hakuri's store Ah, is that soon, Hakuri's storehouse power will recover. If Hakuri can make contact with the sword bearers, he can transport the enchanted blades. Hakuri and Mr. Uraha are headed towards the Senk Senkutsuji Senku 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 fortress. They'll meet up with another owner of an enchanted blade. If Hakuri is in contact with two of the enchanted blade owners and recovers his power, very soon, 
those two enchanted blades will break the deadlock. But don't you think it seems too easy? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I, I do get why maybe the Ishaku would be fully caught off guard by this, because they just wouldn't know. I don't think they knew. As as powerful, as mysterious, and as dangerous as the Ishaku are, I don't think they knew about Hakari's abilities. Or the fact that that would actually become a factor in play. So I get that. But considering they've had all this time, and they're only attacking now, obviously because they need to wait for the Dutch Seki to be developed still. But I don't know. I wouldn't trust... It, it sounds... <laughs> I Maybe mean, just my paranoia, and obviously because I'm a reader, and let's say I look at the series with a more transcendental view. I'm in a higher dimension than these feeble fictional characters. But new to that, I'm thinking on like a macro sense of like, I think they expect you to get the blades back. They clearly didn't mind you getting the Shinuchi back for some reason, despite that being the most powerful of the enchanted blades. And they've had multiple years with these last three. What makes you think that it's going to be simple and clean, no kingdom parts? Like, I don't know. And I think, I think reuniting them, it sounds like a good idea. It sounds amazing. So, I think it's four enchanted blades left, not three. Because Cloud Gouger, N10, and Shinuchi, N10, there were six enchanted blades, N10 wasn't counted, that was a secret seven one. So they're four left. But still, I don't know. I don't know. Zero, you, 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 you seem real confident, broski, but I don't buy it right now. Let's see. Those two enchanted blades will break the deadlock. So, now that you don't have a person to protect, you can really go all out. I love that. You know, it's interesting. Oh, so that is just your... Oh, okay. Oh, so, so maybe, maybe that guy was the leader. Wow, because he, he was the one calling the shots. He specifically... Or at least he's higher ranked than Hidehiko. Huh. Wait, for some reason, I was not expecting that drop. All right. Yuna's interested in you. I was hoping to play with you. <laughs> Too bad it's not just the two of us. Oh. <laughs> Too bad it's not just the two of us. We're playing for keeps too. You might say. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's happening? Who's that? Is that a butterfly? Oh. Another Dots and Seki? Those are the fighters we threw out of the train. Those are the fighters we threw out of the train. They're nearly dead. But those stones... We call them our Counter N10 Special Force. Right now, it's exactly the deadlock we envisioned. Is it though? You're about to get jumped! Shihiro Rokuhira. This means we can kill you. I, you forget he's not the main character. Or you, you forget that y'all are not the main character. In fact, you're fighting him. But man, I don't know. There's something about this design is so he. But now, now, they, now that they, there are two panels of them right next to each other. You see what I mean by the eye similarities? And the dot similarities, notably, Yuda has only individual dots, a dot, two dots above his eyebrows, and then two going over his eyelashes. Or no, above, two ab ab across his brows, and then above his brows, and then below his brows. And then he has the dual rings eye pattern. But also, we have... Brain? 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 We have Hirohiko here, also with the dual eye pattern, also with the dots underneath his eyes. So... There is that slight similarity, and obviously the fits they wear are similar, but notably Hirohiko is lacking earrings. Let's see. Shihiro Rokuhira, this means we can kill you. The deadlock, you got this, is about to be broken. Uh, we, let's hope, let's hope, Shihiro. Obviously you're the main character, so it's got to work out in your favor somehow, but still, oh no. Buddy, I think you're thinking a little bit too short-sighted, Buckaroo. You're thinking a little bit too short-sighted. But let's hope that I'm wrong. But I hope you guys enjoyed the chapter, because I sure enjoyed the chapter. It is most certainly worthy, at least in my eyes. However, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave Lock Dead. You know, because of dead lock backwards. Ah, but leave Lock Dead in the comment section down below. And thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification case bell so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do happen to have a page down below where you can support me for as little as one. You know, monthly things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Those perks include the live reaction to the very other next chapter of every other series I review, add free variations of all my videos, and if you become a $25 patron or a $25 member, you can order whatever video you want. Also, 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 I do have a link to my code file in the description down below, where you can drop 5 beans for a short video, 25 beans for a long video, or any beans at all, any support is always greatly appreciated. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching, once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy the Pencil, writing off.
I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members: Zara, Greyhound, Eternal Flame, and M A Real Rare, Red Wolf four seven six five, Paris Arnold, Astro, Brandon Payne, and G Prosper. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons: Sean, Midnight Lord twenty one, Kevin and Canacion, Josh Brown, Igneo Lind, and A plus A. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our seven dollar members: Autumn Mornings Lazo, Fine, Zombie Hunter, and Austin Wimberly. Then I'd like to give a thank you to our ten dollar members: Robbie Uchia, J Warrior, and A Z Void. Then I'd like to give a big old thank you to our ten dollar patrons: Overlord Zero, Waki Munoz, Waki Munoz, and I Okami. And I'd like to give the craziest, juiciest, most next level, quadruple, sloppy, toppy, next level, superhuman, in beyond this world, kidney having. Thank you to our $100 patron, our that guy with a pencil tear patron, Calvin Elder.